One of the differences between opera and the musical is that nowadays on stage, everybody's wearing one of these little mic things that looks as if they've got a growth right here and they, in a musical, and they sing into the mic, really. And it's quite a small voice that's being amplified. With opera singers, still, you have to be on the stage singing out full. So the problem isn't that. The problem is the engineer and where they place the microphones to pick it up so that they can get the full thing. Again, Pavarotti, when he first started doing... Um, arena shows. The very first one he did, the miking was a disaster and he wouldn't do any more until an engineer at DECA actually figured out a way to amplify the sound for an arena for 25, 50,000 people, but he could stand in the middle and sing the way he would sing in any opera house. And that's the ideal still. So the vocal production that's happening in those live broadcasts by and large is the same as what they've been trained to do and they're singing it for the audience that's there live and what we're getting is something that's being picked up so you're having the live experience in a way but it's through the mics because it has to be recorded and broadcast so no i don't think it's affecting it that much except and i cannot name them there are one or two opera singers who are very famous because they have voices that are beautiful on the microphone the microphone really loves their voice but they do when they appear at the met or covent garden or whatever insist on being very discreetly mic'd because otherwise nobody would hear them beyond row f you know so so but that's cheating and i think that for the real opera singers it's still coming straight off the stage the way you would wish to hear it, and it's being picked up by the mics. But that goes back to 1932. They started broadcasting live from the Met in 1932. There are recordings that people captured because they pirated them, you know, recorded them on whatever kind of tape machines they had in the 30s, and they have been accidentally preserved, and you can now get hold of them. And it's no different. If you hear the live performance of Maria Callas singing off the stage in Berlin, Lucia de Lammermoor. She's still doing exactly what she did in the opera house, as she also was doing what she would have done in front of a microphone in the studio. So I, do, I don't think the miking and the, all that, for the sake of broadcast and preservation, affects anything that much. It's not just the quality of sound, um, it's how it's recorded. Um, there's, a, there's an effect which has been going on since, uh, ever since I've been listening to records and it's that where you place the microphones, people tend to place mics moderately close to the sound source. Whereas when we sit in an opera house, you sit quite a long way back but you get a lot of the uh, the reverb coming back to you as well and that is where that is how we hear a good acoustic like for instance the old La Scala was always renowned for its great acoustic uh, the Wigmore Hall is renowned for its great acoustic and this is to do with the re reflection and that's not always picked up by the recording which sits closer and you get a different quality to the to the voice which doesn't always do favours to big voices. I remember many years ago an interview with the uh, dramatic soprano Jane Eaglin, who at that time was doing a mixture of um, the heavier Italian roles and uh, Brunhilde's and things like that. And she was recording a number of roles for Chandos Opera in English and um, during the interview, she was only willing to have one of those, one recording played, which was her singing Tosca, I think, because she felt it was the only one that actually captured her voice as it really sounded. And that continues. There's the issue of the upper frequencies on uh, recordings, and there's a tendency to film in HD, and yes, you might have great sound, but not everybody listens back on uh, on really good equipment and it going to flatten going to flatten things and so even if you manage to capture the voices perfectly you're not getting it back and we you do lose an element of directionality um, whereas in in the opera house because of the way sound works you know exactly who is singing 
whereas coming back through the speakers, it's, it, it still loses something. 